Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training. Welcome back to the blog. And in today's video, we're going to talk about conditioning a horse. So for a lot of us here, at least those of us in the States, we are coming into spring. So we're thinking about riding a lot more. And we've got to remember that our horses are probably out of shape, at least more out of shape than they were last fall. And we're going to have a better spring and summer, a better riding season if we take the time to prepare them a little bit more properly and correctly. So a few points to think about here before we kind of get into a conditioning plan. The first thing is that your horse's fitness level could vary a lot. Um, even if you were not riding him all winter long, if he was turned out and he's been out in a you know 10 acre field all winter, he's going to have a much better baseline fitness than if he's been stalled for most of the winter. So take that into account. Other obviously other things like his body condition, uh, like his weight, is going to play a big factor in how long it's going to take you to get him to whatever you know athletic or performance level you're looking for. For most horses that are at least at a healthy weight and are, that are reasonably fit, you want to plan on about a 30-day kind of conditioning uh, routine. And just to give you a little kind of background on uh, my history with conditioning, obviously I do a lot of training, I do a lot of riding, so it's something that I'm thinking about all the time. I used to uh, focus even more strongly on just the physical conditioning of of the horse and of riding when I was involved in endurance and competitive trail riding. So when I was doing those sports, kind of the basic schedule that we would follow would be a 30 day program leading up to a 25 mile ride. So we would be working the horse five or six days a week at you know a pretty moderate work level, obviously increasing it, bumping it up a little bit each week. And then once a week, we would have a harder session. Um, in the case for long distance riding, it was a longer ride. And that was kind of just one day a week. And that would increase in, again, for the type of conditioning I was doing for a 25 mile ride, that long distance ride would increase in five mile increments. And I do some long distance running myself. So I kind of think about conditioning um, for myself and the same premise is the same, that you work out more steadily, you increase the uh, intensity kind of week by week, and then you usually have one day that's a, a harder day or a harder workout. Now, a few other things that, again, that will make a difference in your situation with your horse is to think about what are you looking for at the end, like what are you conditioning your horse for? Are you conditioning for long trail rides? Are you conditioning for something like endurance riding? Do you want to be able to do more dressage with your horse? Do you want to be able to get you know, longer times of cantering, um, better balance from him, increase his physical strength to be able to do lateral movements and collection better? Are you looking to do jumping uh, where you want to condition him to have more stamina for going around a course? Or again, just more strength for bigger fences and for uh, being able to not get injured over bigger fences or doing more advanced movements. So think about what your kind of goal is. Think about where you feel your horse is right now. And then also take into consideration how many days a week you're going to be riding. So the plan that I'm going to give you here in a few minutes is basically going to be if you're riding five or six days a week. So if you're riding and exercising your exercising your horse pretty consistently. If you're only going to be riding two or three or four days a week, then it's not a problem, but just keep it in mind that you're going to have to give your horse a longer time frame to develop that strength or develop that stamina. And depending on what your, you know, how big your goals are for his athletic performance, you might want to think about expanding that a little bit. So just two other things to keep in mind. When we are starting a conditioning program, we want to think about going slow and doing things correctly. So what I mean by that is we want, just like when you are uh, starting to run or if you're getting into a workout or a weightlifting program, you're better off doing you know, less reps or less miles but keeping good form so that you don't get injured. Same thing goes with the horse. So that's the first thing. Keep in mind to go slow and uh, do things correctly. And then also just listen to your horse. So I'm giving you this little program as just a very general guide. So pay attention to your horse's breathing. Um, how heavy are they breathing? How much are they sweating? 
Um, you can pay attention to even the, the manner that they're sweating. So if they have that really foamy sweat, that means they're pretty out of shape. Once the sweat starts to get a little bit more watery, like if you're in a warm climate where you know, your horse is, is sweating a lot when you work, um, once the sweat is more watery, less foamy, that's just one sign that you're getting a little bit better fitness from your horse. Um, other things are heart rate. So if you really want to get into it and you want to keep a little, um, like a little a log of your horse's heart rate and some vital signs, that's a good way to track fitness as well. But just remember to pay attention to your horse he seems like he's getting really stressed and tired and he's he's struggling back off a little bit and I think that the little program I'm going to give you next will just be a good guideline to help you get ready for the months ahead here is an example conditioning schedule whether you choose to follow this one specifically or you just take some of the general ideas from it so in the first week, we're gonna be starting off easy. You're gonna think about loosening up your horse, noticing areas of stiffness that they may have developed from being out of work, and just generally getting them back into work, getting them moving, and uh, kind of getting a better idea for where your horse's baseline fitness is. So in the first week, we're gonna be looking at about 20 minute riding sessions, doing about 10 minutes of walk and 10 minutes of easy trotting. So mostly working on long and low, not doing tons of uh, figures, meaning not tons of circles or that sort of thing. In the second week, we're going to be increasing the length of the trot work, plus we're gonna add in more exercises to build strength. So here's where you can start to do more of those circles, more transitions, some simple lateral work. If you are out on the trails, you can start to add in some hills. We're gonna be doing about 25 minute riding sessions, about 10 minutes walk, 15 minutes trot. Uh, we're going to be incorporating several three minute intervals of more strenuous work. So this would be canter, light jumping, these sorts of activities would fall under more strenuous activities. And again, you can start to mix in a little bit of this in the second week, um, but you're going to keep the, the time that you're asking for this more strenuous exercise a little bit shorter. In week three, we're again increasing the length of the trot work for stamina. So trot is the best gait for increasing basically your horse's stamina. Trotting is generally considered the best gait for just increasing fitness and kind of building fitness and stamina. So we're also gonna be ready for slightly longer periods of strenuous work. So here in week three, we're looking at probably about 35 minute sessions, 10 minutes of walk, about 25 minutes of trot, incorporating several five to six minute intervals of the more strenuous work. In week four, we're now going to be increasing the length as well as the intensity of the session. So here we're looking at building up to 50 minute sessions, doing 10 minutes of walk, 30 minutes of trot, and then 10 minutes of the more strenuous work such as cantering or jumping. So this is just a basic four week program to get you started. Obviously you're gonna build on this, you're going to adjust it depending on what your horse's current fitness is and what you're looking to do with them. So as you're following this conditioning schedule or this conditioning regimen, just again, remember to always pay attention to your horse, take in the needs and the way that your individual horse adapts to this as you're going through it. And also don't be too intimidated by all the different times and the, uh, the different exercises. Remember that you don't have to follow this to the letter. This is just a general guide to kind of give you the idea of what a conditioning program looks like and give you something that you can start following. And of course, always remember that when you're training something, when you're teaching your horse something, um, keep that in mind for the day as well. So if you are teaching something, there are times that I like to end the session when I when the horse does kind of that big thing that I was looking for for that day. So an example of this would be if I'm working on simple lead changes. I'm probably gonna save those to the end of my ride so that when I'm working on the simple lead change and the horse gets a nice one, I can stop and be done there. If a moment comes up in your training where it's really good and you just feel like, I really wanna just end this on a high note, but you don't wanna lose your conditioning for that day, then maybe get off and just spend the rest of the day walking with your horse, you know, kind of walk him out afterwards. So you're still able to basically give him that mental break, but you still get a little bit of the body conditioning in. You can also use trail rides, so that's a really great way. Some of the things that I gave you in that schedule are gonna get a little bit long if you're just doing circles in the arena every single day. 
So if you can, you know, take this, mix it up a little bit, some days work in the arena, some days go out on the trail so that you can get some of that physical, some of that stamina work, but it's not quite so mentally taxing on your horse or as boring for your horse, depending on what you're doing, um, that's going to be really helpful as well. So I look forward to hearing about your progress, hearing about your thoughts in the comments. And as always, if you're watching this anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, that's where the best uh, comments, conversation happen. And I have lots of other free riding and training tips that'll help you as you encounter other things in your conditioning schedule. Thanks for watching.